Today's video is going to be about how to draw a portrait with graphite and um, it's going to be drawing from a photograph. So you can see here that I have my reference photo and it's an older photo so it has a slight blurriness to it but everything is still very readable um, and I really like the mood of this photo which is why I'm choosing to use it today. Um, and the reason why I like it in black and white is because I will be drawing it without color. So without any hue or chroma, it will just be a value scale of as dark as the pencil can go to as light as the paper can go. So um, in that way, if you do have a color photograph and you turn it into a black and white photo, it does make it easier to translate values. Values are the hardest thing to wrap our minds around in terms of knowing when to go dark enough and when to go light enough, but mostly it's everything in between. So if you can, um, when you're working from a photograph and you're only drawing it in black and white, if you have your reference in black and white, it really does help. What I will be talking about today is the sight size portrait, um, and I'm just going to really just demonstrate how I draw a portrait like this. This video is a great supplement to the workshop I'll be teaching in Ponte Vedra um, at the Cultural Council, at the Cultural Center there in Florida, near Jacksonville in November. It's a three-day workshop. Um, and so this will just kind of give you guys a little bit of preparatory sort of introduction to that, um, but it's, it's not a substitute for the actual workshop. So you can see that I have my handy dandy 2B pencil sharpened in the European fashion. And I'm going to begin drawing. And the first thing that I want to do, just like any other video, is find my boundaries. So I'm looking at sort of where I think the top of her head is, sort of straight across here. And I'm looking at, let's say, where the bottom of her head is. And I'm standing at a distance here. I'm stepping back and trying to use my eye to judge if these dimensions are correct. And I am looking at that and I think this can come up a little bit. And this one is good. And then I'm looking at the front of her head. And the back. Trying to get a sense for the proportions here, which are much easier to get a sense for when we are drawing it in the same size. In the workshop, what I'll be doing is um, talking about how to train your eye, how to get uh, better and quicker at this, but um, it will be a very similar process here. I'm just sort of speeding it up a little bit. You can see what I'm doing is I'm breaking things apart and I'm using straight lines. And that's very much um, the academic way. Because once we get these lines straight enough, then it's easier to make a curve from a straight line. Um, this is nothing new. I've been saying this a lot in my videos. because it's a standard practice. It was what was passed down to me um, from my teachers and their teachers. So once I get sort of this rough idea in here, I start to chip away. And I want to get a feel for any sort of parallel lines that are happening any distances and I'm really just looking at basic shapes at this point I'm thinking about the skull in general I'm thinking about also distances 
And so, for example, the fact that the eye is uh, about halfway if we're looking at it from here. Okay. And a child's head that's pretty standard, a little bit lower than halfway. Okay, and then that can help me get a better feel for where the features go. What I like about this photograph too is that um, the shadow shapes are relatively easy. A lot of the face is in the light, um, but for example here, all of that can be considered a shadow shape, so I can really just squint uh, and look at that and, and um, sort of judge in terms of like bigger shapes. Again, I'm going much faster and a little bit more sketchier than we would do together in the workshop. In the workshop, what we will do is um, lay down a few more foundation lines that we can be sure of, check our measurements and things like that. Um, for the sake of speeding up this video a little bit so it's not like four hours long. Um, I am doing this in sort of the way that I have come to feel comfortable with after years of training and measuring and basically training my eye. So I'm looking at, you know, is this line parallel to this line? Not quite, you know, what's What's the distance from point to point? Just trying to stay very sketchy here. erased anything really yet so I'm gonna go in sort of neaten up get rid of some of those things that um, I see are a little bit different you can mold your eraser into um, sort of like this chisel form or you can mold it into more of a point to get at some of those dots. Now for those of you who are more charcoal people or maybe even pastel, I think one of the things that you want to think about is what's your end goal with your portrait? Are you trying to have a sketchy portrait or are you ha trying to have something that's more um, realized realistically. So how um, rendered are you looking to get? And how much of that uh, likeness are you looking to get? So a sketchy portrait will get a likeness, absolutely. Um, but it will leave out and change a lot of the things that you see in front of you. And what I'm trying to do with this is I'm trying to have a broad start. Um, but my end goal is not a sketchy portrait. It is something that is more finished looking. Um, and in that way, I'm looking at how I can be more exact and um, I'll spend a little bit more time on this than I would on like a sketchy type portrait. If you work in charcoal, you can start with pencil. I think the scary thing about charcoal and the thing that makes it uh, very difficult is that sometimes it can be hard to uh, erase a little bit or um, it goes down so dark that 
it's hard to stay sketchy or manipulate it and things seem maybe a little bit more permanent by just the nature of the medium. So if you start on a different piece of paper and you use a pencil and you figure out all these shapes and you kind of get your erasing out of the way um, with this, you know, with graphite, which is a little bit uh, easier to maybe manage in a cleaner way and then transfer your drawing onto your charcoal paper and then go from there that you might find you can go a little bit more um, realistic with your work if that's what you want if you want to stay sketchy that's great I think you know there's um, qualities that make both of those uh, types of work um, nice so I'm grouping together um, some of these shadows, I'm looking at distances, and um, now I'm trying to hone in a little bit. And I'm looking at, okay, well, what's the distance from here to here? And uh, the end of the mouth comes, oops, I did not mean to draw on that, comes right underneath sort of this part of the eye. So I don't want to make it too long. And if it is looking too long, I do want to pay attention to the sort of um, curve that is happening here, the indentation, right? So did I actually bring maybe the nose out too far, then making this come out a little bit too far? Can I sort of trim? Still holding my pencil sort of far back so I can get these nice sweeping lines. Maybe I start to think about the hair a little bit. Thinking about sort of chunks of hair. So like this as a piece, this as a piece, this as a piece. You know, notice I'm not going for the curves immediately. Those can come later. What I'm really looking at are main long lines, distances across, to try and control proportion. And side size really does help us with this. So I know with side size that the shoulder height will be the same as the shoulder height here. Just makes it easier. And the doll's head. Now where's the doll's head start? And compared to the shoulder. Now, um, when you learn this, you will use your eraser a little bit more, too. In the workshop, we will learn some more techniques about, you know, how to make sure that your shapes are exact, you know. Um, not only how to train your eye a little bit, but tricks that you can use while you are drawing to help you to see better. Like how to use a mirror, for example.
So I have these like rough ideas of shapes on here, right? And so at this point, what I'm looking to do is refine them a little bit. So looking at the eyebrow here, I'm trying to see, you know, if it were to have borders, what exactly would those borders or boundaries be doing? What are the positive and negative shapes, basically? So I'm not looking at half tones. I'm not looking at how the cheek sort of gets darker here and how there's turning on the nose. Right now I'm just thinking about um, what's the relationship between sort of these shadow shapes and the light shapes? What are the distances? What are the little angles? And trying to get those in. I'm moving things around. Because at this point, we've been drawing so lightly that it's easy enough to do that. important to take breaks. So I just took a little break there and now I'm coming to look at my drawing again and I'm looking again at shapes and just trying to think about how simple I can make these shapes and how that would make them easier to um, replicate. So if I can think of this shape and not how it goes in and out in these tiny ways how it goes one two three four five six seven seven lines and the main ones I want to first look at are the big distances across and then the distances until the, the line changes direction again so this one's longer than this one um, this one is shorter than this one that kind of thing one thing I noticed when I came back to the easel here is that this looks a little bit high and it's also contributing to the fact that um, this from eyelash to top of eyelid looks a little high so I'm turning this now into a chisel and I'm going to just trim so at this point it comes down to millimeters and this is where if you've been practicing your shape exercises from that exercise tier, they really start to pay off. I'm not trying to exaggerate anything either. So if I see a change of direction, I want to put it in, but I don't want to make it look overly pointy. That's not the point of the straight lines. I 
something that's really um, influencing how I see her face is her hair. Especially where the hair gets really light, like right here. So for my mind's eye to feel more comfortable with what's happening, I want to relate that to the face. So for example, when there is dark next to light, it's easier to draw a distinction in your mind. When you have light next to light with just a very little amount of distinction in between, it's harder. And what our eye sees more is that this shape goes beyond this hair boundary. So when I'm looking at my drawing here, I am looking at beyond this point as well. And that can be a really helpful thing to do. You group things big to small. If you've watched a lot of the other videos, um, you've heard me talk about big to small a lot. It is essential to drawing what we would call, I guess, freehand. Drawing in the academic method, not using a projector, not using um, uh, any sort of tracing or transfer methods um, or gridding or anything like that. It's more of you using your eye and searching out the accuracies that you just sort of hone in on, right? So you're not gonna be perfect and exact with the first things that you put down, you know? I'm changing these things little by little as I go and hopefully they're getting closer and closer. And if not, I'll take a step back, take a little break, come back, and see what's not working and try and go from there. In one of the studio tours, I attached my drawing and painting skill set and tool guide and in that paperwork, I think it's like four pages long, maybe five, it's basically a checklist of what you want to be thinking about when you're drawing and painting. Right, so in this way, we, uh, as realist painters, as classical realist painters, we start our paintings with a drawing. And it might be drawing with paint, it might be drawing with pencil or charcoal and then transferring it onto the canvas. But no matter what, painting is very much about drawing. And my point here is that in that drawing and skill set, painting and tool guide, um, I talk about how you want to approach this type of work. It's, um, there's certain um, things that can help and there's other things that can hinder. And the things that can help are stepping back, working big to small, um, going slow, right? So I'm, I'm definitely going way faster than you would want to go because I've done this for a very long time. Um, doing your shape exercises, which I mentioned. Using a mirror. Flipping your work upside down. Taking a break. Coming back to it with a fresh eye. Taking a picture with your phone and taking a picture that includes both your drawing and your reference, that really helps. Looking for flow through lines, looking for big angles. Looking for ways to help yourself see. And I think What's really nice about learning how to work like this is that it is rewarding um, to pull something out of absolutely nothing. Um, it's rewarding to sort of struggle through, right? And then in the end, you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep tweaking until finally you get it. And what it helped me to do when I was a student is learn just how much effort I had to put in because I think what I used to do when I, 
took other art classes and things like that is I would get close, right? And then I would leave it because I'd be scared to make it mess up, you know? Or I'd be like, oh, you know what? I, you know, this eye looks really good even though it's not in the right spot. I'm just gonna keep it there. And then I'll move, you know, other things around to try and help make it look more cohesive. Or I'll leave it more sketchy because if I push it too far, it's gonna look overworked. What this practice has helped me realize is that pushing through to the other side is worth it. And it's just a matter of not giving up. It's a matter of just working on that drawing until you absolutely get it. And sometimes it takes a lot longer than you think. And that's why it's also important to have a teacher there to help you, right? Because the teacher will help you break any bad habits. Like maybe, for example, you don't step back enough. Um, or maybe you go too dark too quickly and then you find that you're like over committed to your lines because you can't erase them. Or um, maybe you've never tried to use the mirror and the three different ways that we can use the mirror. So it's just really, I think, interesting to try and see where, where these um, methods can take you. You can see at this point, I'm trying to get a finer line. I'm trying to really hone in now on these shapes that were much more broad. I'm studying this photograph as slightly blurry and old as it is. For our little things. be very careful with eyes. It's like all of a sudden sometimes it looks like there's an iris in there when there shouldn't be or <laughs> the portrait's like looking off in the wrong direction. You do want to know your anatomy a little bit as well so if you're not sure exactly what's going on if you know physically what must be going on, it helps you to then see what your photograph is trying to show you. Or you can put in more information than what your photograph is showing you. And then it'll look a little bit more real, which I often try to do. Sometimes I'll put in more information, sometimes I will put in less, right? So, but you are in control. For me, it's very much been about getting a likeness though. I, some portrait artists don't um, look to that so much as their main objective. Um, I think when it comes to, especially like commission work or drawing children, it's good at least to know that you can um, really get that likeness. I'm looking at, so I see this dark area here. Where does it line up, right? Is it coming high enough? That will help me feel more confident about where the shoulder is and things like that. Looking at it just as a simple shape at first. Maybe 
you start to lightly fill in. shapes and dark shapes. It <laughs> looks very loved, especially with that hair. So where is the bottom? Could have found that early on. I really did want to focus just on the portrait, but um, if you do end up drawing more than outside of the head, you do want to make sure that you have your boundaries in there pretty quickly. So this line right now is more of that sketchy line. So I want to look to where exactly that profile will end. And then take that eraser. Now here, where the line sort of disappears, um, it could make it disappear. It might be easier.
mouth is slightly open, actually. Her top lip is very thin. Now I use more of the point. You can see how accurate you can get when there is a point. And I haven't had to sharpen my pencil, which is also why this is the way we sharpen them in the beginning. a little bit more tweaking but otherwise I'm ready to start putting in those half tones to really start making the face and the anatomy work and this is where you start to maybe make it look more real if you're very fine with the way that you start to shade, or you continue to make it look more sketchy if you're very sort of quick uh, about your values and your line. Would work a lot more on this portrait but we are out of time so until next time I hope that you can take this video and maybe turn it into an exercise for yourself and see start to train your eye a little bit or at least maybe start to do some more shape exercises and then see you know how exactly that does translate into trying to get uh, a portrait likeness. Maybe you start with you know, making it a little bit more sketchy because you're more comfortable with that and then maybe you move on to making it look more real from there. I hope you learned a lot.